खाओ पियो ऐश करो मित्रो दिल पर किसे का दुखायो ना <laughs> DJ Anjali, I'm based here in Portland. Um, I'm a DJ and a dancer and a dance instructor, um, mostly known for playing South Asian um, folk and electronica like Bhangra and Bollywood and some Asian underground. Um, but I definitely um, also play like global bass um, of the like Latin American tinge <laughs> of like Dembo, dancehall, cumbia, reggaeton. Um, I've been a club promoter and a club DJ for 20 years. Um, and I've been a dancer my whole life, but I've, only, I've been teaching kind of in a studio for eight years. Um, and yeah, when I started DJing, I was studying classical Indian dance and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm gonna be a dancer. And then DJing kind of took over and it was like instant gratification, like, oh, whoa, like, people are instantly into the music that I'm playing, playing Pangra and like um, Indian folk music. People were like, we wanna know how to dance to this. And so it kind of forced me to um, break down the dance for people. Cause I was like, I don't like, I don't know how to teach this. I just do it. It just kind of, my mom's a dancer. Um, and she, you know, was a dancer in India. So I grew up like seeing her perform Anyway, kind of like over the years, I was kind of forced into like um, through through folks asking me just because I'm I'm kind of shy. Like I'm, yeah. I mean, I love performing um, and I love being on stage, but I'm also kind of shy. And so it took people like really kind of asking me a lot. And I was like, finally, okay, I can. I'm gonna teach. So now a lot of times, um, if we are hired, even to do a wedding or like a um, a festival set because like, um, you know, some, they want the dance lesson with the music and, you know, I'm one half of a duo. So, you know, I, that makes it, it's convenient for us because the incredible kid becomes my DJ and then I become the dancer. And then if it's a club night, then, you know, we tag team back and forth and we can DJ all night. So I'm, I'm both. <laughs> We, we resisted for so long because we wanted it, we didn't want it to be like salsa night, like where you have to come early for a lesson, you know? We wanted it to be a club night where it was like, oh, it's drum and bass, or, you know, it's, um, it's whatever, and you can just come and do whatever dance that you're, that you're comfortable with. But slowly I kind of realized, oh, it's like a way, yeah, people, there's like something, um, yeah, I guess there's something extra that people want. You know, they like see me dance or they see other Indian kids dance. And they're like, I want to be able to do that. And that's, yeah, it's cool. It's just um, also Pungra looks easy, but it's like, you know, it's like, it's um, doing the pat your head, like rub your belly, whatever thing. Like it's sometimes, it's, it takes a while to like bring the arms and the legs together. <laughs> so yeah, I um. Like, I love that people want to know how, but also, like, you don't have to know how. You can just come and do your dance, you know? <laughs> From, like, a Bhangra perspective, because it's a harvest dance, or traditionally was a harvest dance, um, it's definitely got that food connection, you know? Um, like, now people think of Bhangra, and they think, like, Indian wedding, right? Like, arms in the air, and, like, everybody's having a good time. Um, and, you know, people I think associate it maybe with like South Asian weddings or, you know, maybe, yeah, just like big celebrations. But the, the origins of the dance uh, come from Vesaki, um, which is a harvest, spring harvest festival, like when the winter wheat crop is harvested in April. Uh, some people call it Vesaki with a V and some people call it Vesaki with a V. You no, know, um, I definitely know the dance happened in the field. And, um, you know, one of the, like, amazing things about um, Pungra and, like, you know, particular folk musics is that it's, um, it's portable, you know? Like, 
you don't need a sound system. Um, you don't need to plug in your, <laughs> right? Um, so the dole is very portable. It's like great for parades. Um, it's the huge um, double-sided drum that, you know, the drummer wears like a strap around their neck because it's pretty heavy. Um, and kind of the other instrument that is associated, like really associated with Pungra is the thumbi, which is a one stringed, um, like a little gourd, you know, um, with a one string. Um, and then, you know, you've got a singer and maybe, you know, maybe if you don't have a big dole, there's a, a smaller drum, the dolok. And so, um, yeah, it's just really portable. Um, after the partition of um, 1947, when the British left South Asia and they kind of spliced Punjab down the middle into India and Pakistan, um, every year in Jan January 26th is Republic Day in India and Delhi is the capital, which is pretty close to Punjab. Um, they have a huge Republic Day parade, you know, where they probably roll out the tanks or whatever. Um, but as kind of a cultural pride moment, you know, each state will send like dancers and performers. And that was like 19, you know, not, I'm not sure if it was like 49 or 50, but um, that's kind of like the first time Bunger went from the fields to like a stage kind of scenario, which is, um, you know, it's so different when you see Bunger performed on a stage, um, as opposed to like, if you go to a wedding or a party, you know, people tend to dance in circles. It's like, um, like that ancient ring dance, you know, and, and um, same with Gidda, which is the ladies kind of version of Bhangra. Um, you know, everybody's in a circle and then maybe a couple of people take turns and they go in the middle, you know, and then they like show off, um, do their little peacock dance and then come out. So um, yeah, it's different. Like, like when people want to come and learn Pungra from me, it's like more of a performative kind of dance. But when you're like in community and you're doing the dance, like with your friends and family, it's, I mean, you are performing for each other, but it's like, you're kind of facing each other, you know, you're not facing like one side. I guess what I love about it is that, well, and traditionally Bungar was danced only by men. So this is kind of a newer thing of the last 10 to 20 years that women kind of are allowed in some of those spaces um, or we've like carved our way into those spaces. Um, and, you know, there's that whole sense um, in South Asian culture and other parts of the world where women and girls kind of hold the honor for a family, you know? And so if, you know, not all families are going to be approving of women dancing in this way. Um, so, and because my mom was a dancer and she's an artist, like I didn't have any of those strings attached to my dance, but, um, um, but yeah, just that sense of freedom um, that you see or you feel like, um, and yeah, it's like everybody kind of gets their moment to like do their little peacock shimmy. <laughs> so my family, it, um, you know, I still have a lot of family back in India, um, but a lot of Punjabi families, you know, when they come to North America, like Canada or the US, like the whole family comes and they don't necessarily have family back home. Um, and we have this good friend who, grew up just outside of Toronto and that's kind of her family scenario is that um like there I don't think they have any family back and maybe some distant relatives but she said every year um when um it's like I guess it's mustard greens um when the mustard greens were like harvested and this is in Canada they would like all the women would be in the garage and they would just make like sog paneer. Um, well, they would make the sog to make sog paneer. They would like process the greens in just like huge, like Tupperware containers, like whatever, five to 10 aunties, you know, just doing all the chopping, the washing, the cleaning, the chopping. Um, and I think they would just like go household to household and like everybody would kind of help each other out. Um, 
And so, yeah, I love that, like, it's like, well, we just picked up from our, like, village in Punjab, and now we're a village in Canada, right? And, like, we still, you know, we still do those, like, traditions and, like, because we still eat the same food, right? And, like, listen to the same music, go to the same temple, like, speak the same language. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, we just picked up. <laughs> One thing that that is that gets replicated here um at some functions like um so the incredible kid my dj partner he's been to india with me five times and every single visit we went to my mom's hometown so we could visit my grandma and this is like in central india nobody it's like going to kansas like nobody goes there unless you have family to visit um and there was a family function around Christmas. I think, it, oh, it was like a distant relative came from Dubai and they had, their baby was baptized like Christmas morning. And then, yeah, maybe that night there was like a party, you know, in a hotel or whatever. And everybody wanted to be a good host and ask the kid, like, what do you want from the bar? And he's like, he doesn't really drink. And he just kept politely declining. But nobody asked me what I wanted to drink, right? And so eventually I was like, hey, hey, like, tell them you want a whiskey or a scotch. Like, just give it to me because they're not going to ask me. And so eventually, you know, my uncle or some, some relative got him like a whiskey. And we're sitting there with my grandma. And, you know, my grandma, she didn't, she didn't say anything. She didn't care. Um, but there's this yeah, this idea that the like alcohol is kind of in the corner and it's really only for the uncles. Um, and that is that not all functions that we DJ here, but there's definitely some functions that we DJ here um, where even the dance floor segregated, like all the women and kids are on one side and all the uncles and men uh, are on the other side and then they'll have the booze in that corner. And also the chicken, because, the, you know, they're, everybody's trying to be vegetarian, but some people still eat chicken. So the chicken and the, like, whiskey or scotch are in the corner. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, like, very, very fortunate that I'm kind of in my position because I can just cross those boundaries. I, um, my family, you know, my mom's Indian, my dad's white. I'm, I'm mixed and... Um, I just didn't like grow up with those kind of limitations, you know, my, my parents are just like, do whatever you want to do, like, do your thing. Um, so also, I don't think they're going to tell the DJ they can't have a whiskey. So <laughs> I definitely think that my dancing has, um, I don't know about in the like Indian or South Asian community so much, maybe a little bit, maybe, but just me kind of being out there in the, in the larger world. Yes. Um, um, I do remember way, way, way back in the day. I mean, this is like 19, 20, 18 years ago um, when we first started DJing like in a bar um, like a young Punjabi woman who was like 18, 19, she said she snuck in somehow. Um, but she said, you know, she wasn't really allowed to go clubbing, but she said if she told her parents she was coming to like a DJ Anjali party, they said it was okay. So yeah, that definitely made me feel like super <laughs> happy. Like I got the auntie and uncle blessing, like, yeah. Um, I mean, I do, I get feedback, you know, from others, from South Asian women and, and Punjabi women too that like that love that I'm um basically promoting their dance my family's from Maharashtra like so I'm more central Indian not north Indian um um so yeah I know there's appreciation I was born here in Oregon but my mom you know came here when she was six months pregnant with me um and when like every time I go to India and I get off the plane, like I'm just hit with that smell um, of like where I'm from. And um, 
the Modi government, the BJP, they've really kind of been fucking over India for like, I don't know, seven, I mean, seven years he's, maybe he's been in, seven, eight years he's been prime minister, but before that he was um, running things in Gujarat. Um, it's just like things keep taking these like darker turns. And um, I mean, part of it is like, part of it is a selfishness on my part. Like I want to be able to return. Um, like I want to be able to go back. Right. And um, yeah, it's just, um, it's like, he's, yeah, it's like genocide. What's kind of what's happening right now with COVID and, um, but yeah, um, to speak about the farmers protests, um, he pushed through like these three laws, uh, like a year ago. Um, well, mm, I don't remember if it was April or August of 2020, but he kind of pushed them through, um, illegally like without proper like the proper um um processing and there was no input from the farmers and the farmers um they do want regulations to be changed but not in this way and there have been protests all over india like farmers um in tamil nadu and maharashtra um and Bengal, um, but because of Punjab's like proximity to Delhi, to the capital, um, so many farmers from Punjab have just like driven their tractors to Delhi. So there's, um, there's three or four kind of entrances to the city and they've set up huge, 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 like, um, like protest camps at three of the um, entrances and the cops, you know, the Delhi police have done, you know, they've sprayed them with water um, cannons. They've tried to, you know, put like spikes in the road. Um, and the Punjabi farmers are like, we're here for, for however long it takes. Like if it takes a year, two years, three years, um, because because um, so many Punjabis are Sikh and there's the tradition in, in the Sikh religion of Lunger, which is community kitchen, you can go to any Sikh temple, um, any Gudwara around the world and um, be fed. So, you know, here in Portland, if you went to the Beaverton or Salem Gudwara, it would only be on Sunday um, after the service. But if you were in India um, and you went to a Gurdwara anywhere, you could get a meal like on any day. Um, and that's like part of their seva, part of their service kind of back to humanity. And so when the Punjabi farmers like set up their protest sites, um, they just like truck in, you know, their produce from Punjab. And it's just like part of, it's like they set up like Lunger, they set up the community kitchen right there. Um, and they've set up libraries. So many of these farmers, elderly farmers, they're like, we've never had time to read. They have time to read now. Um, and yeah, that's, so even though Bhangra is like a secular music, it's so tied in with the Sikh community because so many, um, I mean, um, like Sikhism is like, you know, born, in, it's a like religion of Punjab. Um, and, and that's just like one of the key components of, of the religion is like, uh, is Seva and, and, and the community kitchen longer. Um, the, the golden temple in Amritsar um, is like their most holy site. And I've been there three times and the kid has been there with, we went together twice. Um, and like going to Lunger there is like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just like, my eyes were just streaming the whole time. It's so, I mean, everybody sits on the floor. Um, so it's just so, it just puts everybody at the same level. You know what I mean? And 
the way they, I mean, you're, they're like serving thousands of people a day, right? So the way, um, it's just kind of ingenious too. Like you sit there and, you know, they bring you the roti, like open your hands, you know, um, even the way they like serve doll, it's like a bucket, you know, they're like pulling a bucket down and you get like, <laughs> um, yeah, the way the like, what you get served your water in your cup is like, um, I swear it's like a trash can with like a little, like a little nozzle, you know, like, it's just, yeah, it's like uh, such a beautiful procession, um, like like food ritual. Um, and it's it's just, it's literally open to anyone. So yeah, it's like a very beautiful thing. And when you're snaking through the line to go eat, you know, you can see everybody, it's like the huge tent where they're washing the dishes. And then there's the huge tent where they're washing all the vegetables and the aunties are sitting chopping all the carrots. And, you know, it's, it's like, I feel like it's, yeah, it's, it's part of, um, you know, part of the ritual of being there. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend someday, even, yeah, if you ever go to India or even here, like, um, it's, the, it's called the Sikh Center of Oregon. Um, I, I haven't been inside that one, but I've been to the, we've been to the Salem Gurdwara and like the food is amazing. It's amazing. It's like, it's like home cooked meal on this like massive scale. <laughs> I mean, I grew up going to church um, and you know, maybe afterwards there's the like the coffee hour where it's like sad little like vanilla this cookies or whatever. <laughs> um, but that same, that same baptism that we, the kid and I went to, um, at like my family's church in Jabalpur, um, you know, it was like 6 a, a 6 a.m. service or something. Um, but afterwards there's like, you know, fresh fried pakoras like outside on the church lawn <laughs> and like a huge like Italian espresso machine making chai. Like, <laughs> like okay, this was worth waking up at five for. <laughs> I grew up eating meat. My family eats meat. Um, I grew up eating pork, beef, chicken, all of it. And yeah, I mean, being a vegetarian in a South Asian context is mostly amazing because you, they're, you're pretty much guaranteed um, at all restaurants or, you know, um, functions that you're going to be thought of, unlike here. Um, but not always. Um, um, and sometimes, yeah, like kind of stereotypically you know, at a, at a Muslim function, it's going to be meat and they might not be thinking of vegetarians. Um, so yeah, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm eating chicken today. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of funny because when we do go to India, my family so wants to like, you know, it's like, oh, you're the guests of honor. We're going to cook meat <laughs> for you. <laughs> And I will happily eat chicken curry, um, like homemade family chicken curry, but the kids kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, why do you want to eat vegetarian? I mean, they always forget, which is hilarious. And um, they're just like, why do you want to eat like what rabbits eat? Right. I mean, it's the same. It does. It's the same as here. It's <laughs> I do have a SoundCloud page and there's some, you know, I have mixes there and then I've been doing some guest slots. Um, on the Kebu show that the kid and I started like whatever 15 years ago and then I kind of bowed out a few years ago um but it's Tuesday nights 10 to midnight um KBOO 90.7 FM if you're in Portland I've been doing guest slots um and then posting some of those guest slots on my SoundCloud also um I'm on Instagram we're on Facebook um and then yeah if you want to dance with me I teach at the Viscount um every week over zoom um and if you want to donate to um to help um with COVID relief for the basically the kind of the apocalyptic nightmare that's happening in India right now um because the government's completely kind of um failed the people um I'll just maybe just name a couple places. There's um, Kalsa Aid, uh, there's Haim Kunth Foundation, there's uh, AID Association for India's Development, 
there's Mission Oxygen. Um, those are kind of four off the top of my head and I've listed them on my Instagram and in our Facebook um, pages. So yeah, and I kind of keep updating with new ones. Um, Mission Oxygen is, is doing a lot of work um, because so many, there are no, like there, the hospitals have run out of beds, they've run out of oxygen. So people are desperately, desperately trying to get like oxygen to India. Yeah, it's a bad scenario. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for, for, for listening to me rant and have fun. <laughs>